It's funny you're talking about friendship. Uh, I know that Nate and Evan are that to us. Lester Sumrall, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Lester Sumrall, but uh, I think it was like 200 nations he went to before he, uh, you should read his autobiography. It's really interesting. Uh, but one of the things he said is, um, he said, when you find a friend, then uh, you really accomplish something special, and it's really a gift from God. He said, in my life, I've had three. <laughs> I was like, whoa. I mean, this guy is, like, super, like, connected to lots of people. But uh, he said, one is my wife. So, you know, not, not that he hadn't had acquaintances and not that he hadn't had levels of friendship, but a true friend, the Bible says, sticks closer than a brother. And, uh, and those really are gifts from God. And I encourage you, if you don't have one, pray for one. You might be like, I don't have one of those in my life. Well, you got to get your faith out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because God can align and, uh, and bring people into your life that, uh, that I know me and, me and Joy have seen that personally uh, in our world. And, so. and for your kids. You can pray for your, your kids to have good friends. How many know that that has a huge impact on their ecosystem and their world and serving God and, and all those types of things? My mom was like heavy on her knees like, Jezebel, anybody that was like, didn't fit the mold, she was running them off. You know what I mean? I was like, watch my mom. Just watch her, I can tell you. So she always had discernment. I get around the wrong person, she hair stand up on the back of her neck. She didn't do everything perfect, but she was a watchdog. I could tell you that. So, and your mom was too, as well. So, but we're excited to be back with you guys and uh, just felt like we would kind of crack the book of our open life into uh, just bring you into some of our personal stories and personal victories. I think that when we hear testimonies and victories that it activates our faith Amen. and we're able to say, Oh yeah, I love, uh, we live in a environment where we hear really good preaching. And I mean, some of the best in the world, honestly, they're all book writers and they're all, you know, podcasters. And I mean, they, they speak on a global scale and influence, you know, uh, even hundreds of millions of people. It's pretty, pretty wild, but I love to hear their stories about like their life, you know, and, and a lot of times you can connect to those stories and you can find yourself in your own world and something that can activate your faith and can be a trigger point for your faith. And, and you look for trigger points, you know, um, that that's one way the prophetic works is something activates in you and you can, you can reach up and grab a trigger. And, uh, and when you can do that, then a lot of times you can, you can bring what's in that environment down into your, in, into your own world. And uh, so, so I, if you've got your Bible tonight, go to 1 John chapter 2. We'll kind of kick it off. I don't have a lot of scriptures, but this is kind of the driver scripture. And uh, we may do, we're going to do some co-mingling here tonight. And uh, Joy will share some stories. I'll share some stories. Maybe we'll get our kids involved. Uh, we'll just kind of feel it out. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, let truth abide in you. Therefore, let... Okay, so I'm in uh, 1 John 2, 27. No. 1 John, yeah, 2, 24. I'm going to start a little early. Therefore, let uh, that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written concerning those who try to deceive you, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. And it is true and is not a lie. Just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. And uh, do you want to read it in the Amplified, honey? I know you had read it earlier and uh, really liked that version of it. Yeah, why don't you read that in the Amplified? Say, come on, anointing. Anointing's like all in an engine, right? Makes everything flow well. Okay. Got a mic over here? Hello? Okay. This is starting in verse 27. It says, But as for you, the anointing, the sacred appointment, the unction which you receive from him abides permanently in you. So then you have no need that anyone should instruct you. But just as his anointing teaches you concerning everything and is true and is no falsehood, so you must abide in, live in, never depart from him, being rooted in him, knit to him, just as his anointing has taught you to do. Isn't that good? 
So one thing that, um, you know, coming into just the Bethel community and, and just gleaning from how they do life and uh, one of the biggest things that, 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 I, that really impacted us and our, our family and continues to have impact in us is that, uh, that they're a listening church. And I kind of tapped into a little bit of that this morning, kind of opened a little bit of that up. And I always, I came from a faith background. I was raised kind of word of faith and uh, then was ordained Assemblies of God. Uh, so I had the had the faith side of like dominion. God's called us to take nations, prosperity, wealth, uh, you know, claiming things and all that. So that's a huge part of who I am and my my DNA. Uh, and then assemblies of God was just revival, and signs, wonders, healings, miracles, the whole Brownsville thing. That 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 DNA uh, lives inside of me. And so uh, when <clears throat> when I when I when we went to Reading, it was like word of faith and like assemblies of God, like had a baby, you know, and, and that, and that was just a, a DNA that I wanted to participate in. And I really wanted to be in a place that could bend my brain and continue to just put, uh, even just new DNA in me that I could pass down to my children and my children's children. And, uh, you know, in life we're either breaking principalities or ushering in the glory, right? So there are seasons, you know, you go through valleys and peaks in life, right? Uh, and if you, if you're like, oh, I, lose, I just live on peaks. Well, valleys sure, surely to come soon. You're close to a valley. <laughs> so better, get, better enjoy the view, you know. Uh, we see that in the life of Jesus. We see that in the life of the apostles. You know, we see it all over the world. But, uh, but don't be discouraged today if you're in a place of breaking principalities. And sometimes, uh, even though we, we may like the, va- the, the peaks the most, the valleys are where we get the gold. And the valleys are the, are the things that end up being the most impactful in our lives. And God brings them in waves because I don't think that we can handle them all at once. But his, but his, uh, his divine thread is, 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 is just synchronized through that whole process of wherever you may be in life. And it's beautiful, you know. Um, that's what's going to, I mean, heaven's going to be great. But I think that the Lord admires uh, our ability to work through those valleys and peaks and pains and all those types of things. Uh, even what it's like to live for God when maybe everything isn't going your way. And then you have to lean in. You have to hear the voice of God. We're going to be in a place one day where we just freely commune with the Lord, to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. One day we're just going to be super present with the Lord, and we won't have probably valleys and peaks. We'll just have peaks. But uh, So valleys are a gift from God. And whatever place you are in life, I just want to encourage you that it's, it's all a dressing room for eternity. That's all it is. Yeah. That, that your biggest problem is just part of your dressing room. And that it's important to... to, to and, and sometimes your biggest problems are your biggest gifts in life, if you embrace them that way. And, uh, and what I found is, you know, we had our little God instead of Google. I seen the Google thing today a couple times after that. I'm like, every time I see that, I think God. But how many of we've become accustomed in life to thinking we can do anything as long as we Google it and watch a YouTube video? Suddenly, I can paint my car. (laughs) Suddenly, I'm Joanna Gaines. I can design a house, you know, Pinterest, whatever. I can, uh, with hunters all the time, they're watching like a YouTube video how to clean a deer because they're like embarrassed. They don't know how. You know, so no matter where you go, (laughs) well, just ask, you know. So... But, but, but even myself, like, you know, I, I run a business where um, I was, like, taking in product and didn't know how to do it, going to the back, watching videos, and then do it and then charge them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, what's your training? My employees are like, how do we get trained? I'm like, YouTube. <laughs> Google. <laughs> Smartest person in the world. <laughs> Google it. You know what I mean? But how, do I, how about if we God did? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I got an answer for that. So, you know, even today, everything that we come in contact, every answer we need is like, bam, there it is. Like, look it up, bam, got it. And, um, and I think that there, that is a, you know, every generation operates inside of a mantle and a gift that makes them different than every other generation. Give an iPhone to a five-year-old, they'll have to figure it out in a couple hours. They're showing you how to set stuff, set alarms, do things, turn things off, Zoom, whatever. You're like, oh, how you do that? It just comes natural to them. Why? Because it's hardwired in their DNA for such a time as this. They live on the planet. I mean, they're going to be the baddest multitaskers that ever lived. You know, because they're like tweeting, texting, calling, you know, cleaning the house, doing homework, Zooming right now. It's like, dang, 
These people are like superhumans. You know what I mean? But that's a mantle that exists this, for this day and hour inside of uh, even God's, God's people, you know? And, um, and so, I don't know where I was going with that, but, um, oh, so, so the, the whole deal was that, that God ultimately is the greatest search engine with unlimited answers and resources for any problem that you face in life. And sometimes we might need to not go to Google. We might actually need to go to God. And what I found is with going with God, people kind of bypass God um, because it can be uh, work, you know? It can take time, and that can take, you know, paying attention. You ever heard pay attention? Pay means it costs you something. And when you pay attention, you have to give something so you can get something. And uh, and, um, for me one of the most impactful things to come into in probably the last five years of my life is to learn how to pay attention. I didn't do really good in school <laughs> when it comes to paying attention. I got through. I'm a C student. I made it. Made it through college. Made it all the way. But, um, but paying attention was never, was never my gift. And uh, coming into my 40s, I'm 40 now, I'm learning to, to pay attention. But, uh, but so the, the search engine exists and in the in the uh, the halls of heaven here, we've got this we've got this unlimited amount of information, resources, answers, every problem that exists on planet Earth, everything that we need to know about anything and everything is I wouldn't say a click away, but uh, but we're in a we're in a position to be to be able to access that, and so accessing that, um, spending the time doing business with God. Um, is exponential, right? And so I think the practice, go ahead. I was just going to say I wanted to add something to that because I think sometimes it is the work, but I also think sometimes people struggle to believe that they can actually hear for themselves. Yeah. Um, John 6, I'm sorry, 629 says the work is to believe. And I think it's not just believing in him or believing what he's done. It's also believing that we can hear from him. That's right. That we don't have to have a diploma from, you know, Bible college to hear from him. That we don't have to have all these different things that God, um, he made it to where we we can hear his voice. That's right. It's not complicated, but we've, a lot of times we've believed lies that, well, they hear better from me or um, I need to ask a pastor. I need to ask a leader. But God right. wants us to access him. He's given us that access That's right. uh, to no hear from mediator. him. There is no mediator between you and God. You don't need someone to talk to God for you. And, and that is, religion in its roots is to push you out of hearing and into eye control where kingdom is ultimately you can hear and let me teach you to do that. Even if you need some refereeing or some boundaries or whatnot, you're to start that now. And, and honestly, I feel like even for Sheena and the children's ministry, whoever's involved in that, it is, it is vital and it is important. You know, a kid can learn a language like that, right? Adults be like trying to learn Spanish, like just like I can't figure this out. But a kid can just, just, just like that, acclimate to it and become fluent in it because at a young age, I don't think we have all those gaps like I was talking about this morning. So I think that, you know, uh, remember the, the, the day of Pentecost. How do y'all like that? The, the whole idea that kids were a part of that. Uh, bringing that into, into your home and beginning to activate your kids into a place of unlimited resources where you are not as a parent carrying all the weight for... Because what happens if, you're, if you don't learn to, to, to access God's answers and solutions, then you carry all the weight of all the problems and all the answers. And the truth is you may not know the answers. And, and, and what you've got to learn to do is activate your children into hearing, activate your family into hearing, and create a culture and an ecosystem where that becomes the norm. And accessing God for information is a, is a, is a, is a way of life, right? And a church does that, man. You're going to see exponential growth. You're going to see miracles. They'll be able to come up here, each family, and tell you zillions of stories about how God intervened, came into their life, come into their situations, came into their scenarios, and you'll just see wins, 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 wins. There may be some valleys, but there's going to ultimately be some peaks, and you're going to see. So that's something um, that, that I remember when uh, we went on our, uh, I guess, our first marriage encounter there at, uh, at Bethel, I'm, I'm, I'm like ready for somebody to tell, I'm, you know, guys like tell me what to do and I'll do it. You know what I mean? Like give me my ABCD, 
you know, and what we found is that they would kind of teach for a second and they would, they would create, you know, the environment, you know, for listening. And then they'd be like, okay, so let's get together now. And be like, okay, we get together. And they're like, so let's spend 30 minutes just, just asking questions and hearing answers from God. And, uh, and so I'm like, well, that, you're just copping out all your work. You don't got to do anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, but, uh, I, but, but as people, sometimes we want answers, right? Like, give me answers. But, uh, but sometimes we want, we want to be, uh, we want to be uh, spoon-fed, not self-fed. But I think to mature and to come into ultimately really uh, precisely hearing the voice of God, because I, like this morning, I don't want to get you cranked about hearing the voice of God and then just like not get practical. So, so tonight I'm trying to get practical because hearing and navigating through hearing is a way of life. And, and it's a way of life that if we don't get intentional about it, then it's like all we do is talk about it, right? So, so, so we learned in our marriage that uh, when, when we come into uh, wanting to grow, wanting to change things, wanting to continue to better our marriage, that that's going to be on the, the other side of a whole lot of dialogue. And dialoguing with God is just is, is something that, um, that is, is super, super powerful. And so you want to share anything about that before we move on to like our first story? I was just, I was thinking about the saying, like, it's better to teach a man how to fish rather than, what is the saying? Yeah, yeah, and to give him a not fish. To, yeah, not to give him a fish, but to teach him how to fish. And I just think um, that's the day and age we're living in. Like, the Lord wants us to not just know how to go to the store and buy something or know how to come to church and get a word, are always dependent on that. God wants us to have access to him constantly for the little things and just have the tools that we know how to access him when we need him and just to learn how to get still, to get quiet, to ask him the right question because he will show up and he will speak in those moments. So um, John ten twenty seven says this, the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. And I just love that because it's just so clear. My sheep, they hear my voice. They know my voice. And, um, and he's like, and I know them. So I Yeah, it's another scripture. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And it's, it's actually our identity is, is how we identify with children. It's because we talk to God and God talks to us. We are hardwired to hear from God. It is more natural to hear from God than to not hear from God. You know, but, but sometimes we have strongholds and different things and lies. Um, and I think that scripture, if you can go to, to uh, John 2, 7, he abides in you. And you don't need anyone to teach you, but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. It is true, and it is not a lie. Just as it is taught to you, you abide in him. And so really, the, what, what causes us sometimes to, to hear from him maybe isn't coming into like, oh, the Lord is talking to me. Sometimes it's identifying that he's not the one talking to you. And then when you identify what's a lie, then you can actually access truth, right? Because so many, I think that, Lies may be bombarding you more than truth. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so therefore, as you're getting hit by lies, you can take the temperature of that. You can put the wind against that. And you can say, is this a lie or is this truth? And then when you come into, that's where sometimes it takes that referee. It takes the Lord to say, what's really going on here? And then when you find out what's really going on here, you can access truth. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that we use the, the shield of faith to to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. So we know darts are coming constantly. They're coming at your, your children. They're coming at your marriage. They're coming at your church. They're coming at your finances. They're coming at everything you're setting out to do in life. And so you're constantly having to pull those things off, right? And so if you just like pow, 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 and you don't pay any attention and you don't deal with lies, then, then if you're not careful subliminally, they begin to affect the way you live, think, and, and have your being, right? Jesus actually answered lies. Ah, uh, it is written. Nah, uh-uh. This is, what the, this is what God says. Nah. And so I think if Jesus needed to respond to lies, it's very important that we respond to lies. And that is, I think, what keeps this co-laboring, interacting presence where we're constantly bringing God into our world because we're having to discern on a daily basis what he's saying and what he's not because lies are coming at us. Right? And then if you're abiding, the Bible says in him, then it's easy to tune into truth and deal with those lies, right? And we'll tell you some how we do that with our kids and different things. But uh, why don't you tell um, just some stories that just to, to uh, um, 
Yeah, yeah, just to activate people to, you know, to, to move into your divine destiny, I think that we move into practically examples of how we hear from him and how it impacts our life and encourage people. Is, is this okay? Like, I might be, like, you might be like, this is elementary, you know, I already know all this stuff, but I just think that getting people hyped and not giving intentional, practical hearing skills, stories that, that are examples of when we heard and what that did for us and how we now navigate based off of something we heard I, is helpful for me. When I hear people do that, I'm like, that's what I want to hear. And let me in, let me behind the curtain, you know, into like inner workings and give me examples. So, okay. Um, okay. So I think a story he wants me to tell is when we, so when we first, I first had um, just this vision of our family in Reading at Bethel. And um, the long story short of that is we basically, we were seeing a counselor at that time, and he was like, my counselor to you. And he was a former pastor, missionary. And then at that time, he was a full-time counselor. And he said, when I was, you know, a missionary, I would have, um, I would send, if somebody was like, I want to go to, we feel called to Africa. I always had them go for at least like a week or two. And then come back and tell me if they still wanted to go. <laughs> they still felt called. And so he's like, I just, I feel like y'all need to go. Go to Reading. If you can spend two weeks there, then go and just see if the Lord's really still lighting on it. If you still feel confirmation about it. So we're like, okay. So we go out to Reading and I, I knew the Lord was calling us there, but Trey wasn't quite <laughs> as um, positive about it as I was. And I really wanted the Lord just to meet him there and, and or go, and not just, yet. Just or... a real time out, you know, um, I had uh, built a life that was really working well, and I felt like I kind of was accomplishing the American dream, nice house, nice car, awesome job. Well, he was about to step into a... I was offered a, a really high-paying job uh, with even, like, some kingdom benefits, and it was kind of thought maybe this is my dream on a silver platter. And my wife is like, yeah... That all looks great. I mean, I just got on a private jet, went and spoke to 900 pastors with a guy with, like, the 13th largest church in the world who's, like, John Maxwell's pastor, Joyce Meyer's pastor, and Ron Hart Bunke's pastor. He said, can you please follow me and carry my bag and just come preach with me everywhere I go? I'm like, sure. <laughs> and so I'm like, honey, honey, honey. And she's like, I don't think that's God. That, I, was, not, that was not the job. <laughs> No, no, that was all, not that job say, is being all that to say, the direction I, I was kind of like feeling was like, seemed like everything I ever, ever wanted. Um, you got to understand, joy. Hey, honey. Joy is. You got to let me finish the story. Okay. So, um, basically. Real life. We'll be Stranger. here like all night if he keeps interrupting. <laughs> okay. So. Um, <laughs> basically we go to Reading and Trey is, you know, you can tell he's fighting it a little bit. We're there in this hotel room and he's like being sarcastic and whatever. And he's like, all right, I guess I'm going to go work at the post office or I guess I'm going to just get a job at Walgreens. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I drive a dump truck. I'll go do that. Whatever it is. I'm like, it doesn't matter if we're supposed to be here, whatever. So anyway, he was definitely feeling that and, um, so I'm just like, Lord, you're just going to have to meet us. Like, I, I need you to come. Like, I need you to speak to me. I need yes. you to speak to him. I need <laughs> something. We need you some know? dots to connect. So I'm, this is, might sound strange. Maybe it won't for some people. But I'm in, I put my phone on the back of the bathroom toilet, and it just slides right off. I mean, and it didn't even have like a weird angle or anything. It literally, I put it down and it just slid off and like hit the floor and cracked, the screen cracked. And I was like, what? I, and I, at that point, I'd never cracked a screen before. And I was like, that is so strange. And I turned it over and I felt like the Lord said, pay attention. There's something in that. Pay attention. There's and I was word. like, pay attention to the phone broken. Okay, I mean... You're going to break me. I don't know. <laughs> what are you saying? So I come out, and I'm like, I told Trey, I'm like, I just the, broke the phone and the screen, and I feel like the Lord said there's something in this to pay attention. He's like, okay. <laughs> He's like, look, let's just get in the car. Let's go take a ride. I just feel like we're supposed to go for a drive. Yeah, so. Um, so. 
So yeah, so I'm processing, like, so I'm moving 1,900 miles across the country, getting, throwing roots down in a town like this quick, and, and, and potentially sending my wife to school, raising my family and, and children, uh, and making this transition um, is a bit of a gauntlet. And even at Bethel, people will tell you it is the gauntlet to get into Reading. And there's a lot of, like, opposition when people try to come in and set up camp and... Uh, but I had my faith set. I feel like the Lord gave, I, as much as I was tangling with like, let me go get some just anything job and exist here, and I was willing to do that, I set my sights on like, if I come to Reading, you know, I kind of like, like, Lord, like we're going to have, you know, the Lord can, is a negotiator. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right. You know, remember when David negotiated? He's like, all right, I'll take that giant. But here's the thing. I want no taxes, and I want the girl. I was like, sure. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, okay, I need to make eighty to 100000 bucks a year, and I need to do it instantly. And, like, you go ask anybody in Reading, rolling in and doing that is almost impossible. Okay, go ahead. I thought it was my turn. Well, Sorry. I'm not done with the story. Go ahead. Okay. So basically... Um, we go for a drive. We pull into this parking lot. It's got like a Trader Joe's and AT&T. And we see this um, spot, this storefront that is available. It's for lease. And it's right next to the AT&T. And That's all of a sudden, yeah. all of a sudden, Trey's like, I know. that space is available. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, it's right next to an at and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, my buddy... He does franchises. He does these phone repair stores, and he puts them right next to AT&T's, and there's a spot. So I turned the curb right then. I was able to lock my faith and adjust my faith into... uh, It's a longer story than that, but... We we want to get on some more stories. But it was like, at that moment, like, that search engine connected with something. So all that to say, we... That was literally February of 2014... I believe, or February 2015. Anyway, um, we moved November of 2015 to Reading, and um, we opened that store the following October. Yeah, I did 13 other In that store. So anyway, to this day, that's our store. It's in that that spot, that exact spot, and um, it's the really the thing that's been able to... We do about 7,000 devices a year. We're the stakeholder in a 300,000 population town. Um, we are pretty much the go-to for, for, a, for two hours of, of, of rural in every direction. Uh, what I wanted was a, a base, a base uh, pay that would allow my family to be covered, that would allow me to grow in the city and also uh, do all the other things I wanted. In a short, short amount of time, the Lord was able to give us freedom, flexibility, and I'm gone two, three months a year. Um, you don't launch a business, travel two or three months a year, and increase in sales, and and that that generally don't. If, I mean, Kyle knows like that. If you were a consultant, or, I've never been to do the life coaching deal because if I told him this stuff, they'd be like, "What are you gonna do?" <laughs> you know, what I mean? I've never been able to do like let's let's plan out your life. I'm like, man, my life changes so much that I'm gonna tear that paper up and throw it away. You know what I mean? So so all that to say, accessing uh, what God had for us, and ultimately that spun off into. Now I have a hunting career. I was able to give things up, get things back in my life, and I'm kind of freelancing and doing things that I want to do. I'm able to now underwrite uh, some of my wife's dreams, but all that like in a short, short amount of time. So all that to say, and I think every story has an activation point to release your faith. And, and so to, to, before we move on to the next story, if you're in a place where you're like, you know, like I know where I'm at, but I know where I want to be, and I just can't connect the dots between here and there. And uh, maybe you're frustrated like I was and you need a glimpse of something. Or maybe uh, you're the person, she was the receiver, I'm the you know, activator. Um, but as a team, we were able to land what God had prepared for those who loved him. No eyes seen, no ears heard, what God has prepared for those who love him. And when God is shifting you, the wind is shifting you into something, you don't quite know what it is, but you kind of got your like surfboard out, and you're, catch, you're, ready, you're thinking like there's, there's got to be a wave out here that, uh, that, that those, are, those are tough times. 
Those are times where your faith is just tested to the max. But I, but I want to release faith today because those moments, I think the enemy, uh, the, the dogs of doom bark the loudest at the doors of destiny. You might want to write that down. The dogs of doom bark the loudest at the doors of destiny. So we were at a place that represented the doors of destiny. I haven't talked to my employees in three weeks or however long I've been gone because God's blessing is on that business. And I have other businesses and God's blessings on those. But those things were in the heart of God long before in the hands of man. And what we want for you is whatever's in the heart of God to come into your hands and for you to be able to make those transitions and those steps along the way, whether it's a side hustle or whether it's a business you want to start or, where, or whether it's a, a missions idea that you want to underwrite or dream or whether it's something that this house is planning for, how do we get from A to B? And so if you're there, if you're here today and you say, yeah, I've got some things like that in my life and I want to, uh, and I need activation in that area, I think stand up. Let's release, let's release that testimony today. And so, yeah, there you go. Stand up. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Why don't you just come up to the front? Let's 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 just uh, get personal with it, and and let's believe that um, that this is the trigger point for your faith. And just like she dropped her phone, and look, and I just want to encourage you, like if something horrible happens, don't like take it as like the killer of your dream, because sometimes those things are the gateway. To your dream, right? And those are the doorway into to these 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 seem like walled cities. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, and I I just sense with you two, you're you're moving into a new space. There's a new space that you're moving into right now. And uh, and I just sense that that, uh, that man, you're so in that in that in that place of of connecting those dots. And I feel like the Lord has gone before you. Angels have gone before you. And that uh, just continue to move forward. But uh, it, it's so cool to know God went into a space long before I got there. And God actually protected things that, for me that, that no one could ever access. I mean, and I was able to see so many miracles to bring me in to those places. I could, I could stay here all night and talk about the miracles that God did. But there's miracles already ahead of you, already planned for the space that you're going into. So I want to encourage you. Y'all give Jesus a hand. This is my pray. Just, we're going to pray a, a general prayer if you get something for a person individually. And we'll share that, and then we'll go on to the next story. So. Um, the couple, white shirt, black shirt. Um, I just, I felt earlier just the Lord speaking about your pure hearts. Like, I just feel like he really highlighted that to me about both of you, that he's given you such pure hearts. And I think maybe there's been some things in the past where you felt like, gosh, I Sometimes we get screwed over, I think, because we're just too nice or too good or, I don't know, too pure. And I just feel like the Lord wants to say no. Like, everything that maybe you felt like you've, has been taken advantage of or maybe places where you felt like things were stolen um, or that God is going to redeem, that God is going to restore, and that he's actually not going to do just, you know, he's not going to bring back what you, the tiny things you lost. He's actually seven times over your life. And I just feel like he says, I can trust you. And therefore, I can bless you. And I just feel like he's got some great things coming to your family. And just be ready for it. I feel like he's preparing you. He's like, prepare your stance because favor's coming. Because it's a lot to carry. The favor's coming. So, Lord, I just bless this couple. I bless them with favor, Lord. I bless them with blessings. I bless them, Lord, with um, a return, Lord, for the things that they've lost or stolen, Lord. The things that maybe have been taken. Or, Lord, just the hardships that have come to them, Lord. Lord, you have seen them, and you have known them, Lord, even in the secret place, or that you know them. And I just thank you, Lord, for uh, just redemption, for restoration, Lord, for their lives, Lord. And we just thank you for the good things that are coming to them. <clears throat> like, take the stakes, like even that scripture that says, like, take the stakes and spread them wider. Like, get ready, because it's coming to your house. Yeah. <clears throat> Kyle, I was thinking about you. Uh, Lord started speaking to me about you three or four days ago, actually. Um, and uh, I heard the, the word 11th hour labor, um, that, uh, that it doesn't take energy to accomplish. It just takes position and it takes timing. And, uh, and Jesus was able to do, you know, 
you know the story they get they get paid for one hour what everybody else got paid 11 for and i think that that's the place to put your faith that i exert a little bit of energy and i get the same as everybody that exerts tons of energy and then i also feel like don't don't be afraid when things go backwards because sometimes trajectory is like a bow goes back before it goes forward that sometimes when things go backward it's actually for your advantage and just hold your hold your stance in that position and know that ultimately god has a plan to, to move you forward in that. And then remember that sometimes uh, I, I, believe, I believe in hard work and I believe in diligence and I believe in being a faithful steward. Uh, and it's like you graduate through those things, you know, you teach your kids those things, but ultimately then it comes down to my work uh, is to believe. And, uh, and I believe that you're graduating into a place where when you're working, he's resting, but when you're resting, he's working. And that, uh, that I wanna challenge you to rest and know that it's not activity that brings results it's the hand of the lord that brings results and trust in his in his hand um to bring things to you and into your world so and i want to pray for everybody father we just thank you lord for everybody who uh those things you said all those things we desire when we pray uh believing we receive them lord that that you as, as 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 a father want uh as a good father want us to to set our sights and our desires on, uh, on our passions and the things that you've caused uh, to rise up in us and to be born. Every dream and every plan and every thing that, that, that everyone here is setting their faith and their sights on, God, I pray that, Lord, you meet them uh, and you bring divine, divine wisdom. We thank you that this is a trigger point, an activation moment where things begin to happen to them and come to them. And from this point forward, Lord, you make the complicated simple. That's the word tonight. The Lord says, I'm gonna make the complicated simple. I'm going to make the complicated simple. And I, I thank you, Lord, for spiritual wisdom, God. I thank you, Lord, that they are able to navigate not by what's seen, Lord, by what's felt and what's heard, Lord. And that you give some of them just the title deed tonight to see what may not exist, but to be able to hold and have that faith because of what they've seen and know, Lord. So we thank you for that. And we release that into this room and into this environment in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Do you mind playing the piano while we do this? So, all right, you guys can take a seat. Um, it's funny, um, uh, you talked about the bow deal. So, uh, you know, the Bible says, um, given will be given unto you, press down, shake together, and run it over. And that it also, uh, whatsoever a man giveth, that will he also receive. So, just a, a testimony. I started giving Matthew's bows away, I guess, like, 20 years ago, I had the first one they ever made. Uh, I think it was a Z Max, and then uh, the Z Lite, and then the MQ32. All the way to present day, I've had about 15 of them. But it's funny, I think I've given nine away um, at this point, and I've probably had eight given to me. And I mean, like, you can't get that lucky. <laughs> like, I don't know anybody else that's like had over two given to them. But the idea that as, like he was talking about those seeds and that soil, and as you're seeding, it's like God is that accurate. He's that accurate. Not only, you know, and in, in, in the area you sow, that's where the area you see favor. So, so, and so, and so. And it's hard, man. You think I want to give my brand new bow away that I shot for two weeks that I custom designed for myself? At this point, I'm like, when I'm getting it ready, I'm like, I'm getting this ready for somebody else. I've like already accepted it. Like I'm a pass through for Matthews. Like, <laughs> but one of the coolest things, the bow's great. I get another one. But one of the coolest things is I actually got caught. Somebody called me. They're like, I was talking to this guy the other day. His name's like Matt or something like that. He's got a bow company. And uh, I'm going down to meet him. You want to hang out? I'm like, what's his last name? He's like McPherson or something. I was like, Matt McPherson, like Matthews Bows. He's like, yeah, I'm going down to meet with him. You want to come down there with me? I was like, yes, sir. I'll be down there. <laughs> So I actually got to meet Matt. I actually got to hear his story. He actually uh, personally pays for 800 missionaries' full-time salaries. He's the largest bow company in the world. He's the inventor of the compound bow, and he's like one of the baddest mama jamas that ever lived on planet Earth. Got a, actually had a spiritual dream, and that's what, how he created that company. Um, but all that to say, uh, isn't, it, isn't it just cool that when you participate with God and when you begin to sow, that those things come back to you? I just thought that was a cool story for activation. So, all right. So, want to move on to the next story? I don't, I don't think I'm going to do the Sacramento story. Well, maybe I will. 
I maybe will. So, so, so God gives us a God gives us successful. He gives me a successful business in a short amount of time. But I also sold about thirty franchises. Um, I uh, I was able to do four stores in Texas and six stores in California. I did all that in eight months. So it was a really busy um, season for me. And uh, some of that got a little western and sideways. And I found myself um, a little overloaded. Uh, when you're an entrepreneur or you're a visionary or a pastor or whatever it is, sometimes you can, you know, jump off a cliff and try to build a plane on the way down. And that's a little bit of my, my nature. And, uh, and uh, so I found myself like, like this isn't right. This isn't working. Uh, I really, I, I, maybe I've deviated away from exactly how, how God wants me to do things. And I found myself in, in, a, in honestly a real mess, like a bad, bad mess, like a, I, you could not recover from this mess. Uh, naive and full of passion, uh, but but got in with a with a business partner that was a really powerful, you know, person. And 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 I found well, myself. I was just gonna say, we realized, you know, every good opportunity is not always a God one. Yeah. That was a big learning curve, and we felt God on that one store. And then a guy came to us and asked us to do lots of stores with him. And we thought, oh, this must be God. And it was a good opportunity. I don't know that it was a God opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So I have a conversation with a former client of mine for long. He puts half a million in my checking account. He's like, hey, let's go rock and roll with 30 stores. I'm like, this is the Lord. And so my intentions were that, that, man, this is is a God thing. And and, and in, in essence, a lot of it was. And, and in essence, a lot of that led into things that needed to take place and accomplish. But nonetheless, on your journey to hear from God, to do great things, to, to you know, absorb what it is heaven's saying and go forward, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail unless you don't try. You will fail. You will make mistakes. You will hit your head against the wall. Babies don't learn to walk without falling. And you can't be afraid of that. And, I, and I'm like one of those babies who like almost died learning to walk maybe. In, in essence of what I was doing in the business world because I'm just like gusto, you know what I mean? And, and so I think I had about 1.8 million in personal guarantees. Um, and and a, my business partner uh, is wealthy enough that he said, so I'm disconnected from the business. Um, I, 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 I have no power to, to operate within it. Uh, we had contracts in place that he was going to, you know, clean up all of the, the paperwork that would release me. And I was just going to take one store and, and do my, my thing. And uh, he calls me one day. He says, hey, get your assets in order because I'm fixing to shut the whole thing down. I'm like, wait, you're going to burn a million-dollar investment and shut all that down? I was like, those retail people are going to, like, every one of them is a mortgage. Every one of them is like a three to $500,000 bill that you owe. And, and, uh, and it's leveraged into your personal assets, your your kids' kids' assets. <laughs> I mean, it's like in California, that paperwork is tight. You're dealing with people who own, you know, the franchises that Best Buy are in and Trader Joe's are in. These are like sharp guys. And the litigation side of that is like a business. You know what I'm saying? And so I found myself like looking at like bankruptcy in the eyes and, uh, and, and it's like, Lord, I got a mess right here. And I just wanted to like raise my family and be in God's will and here I am, like, in a bond. And um, is this okay? They'll let y'all behind the veil a little bit. And uh, so I, uh, I didn't know what to do. And, um, and all this to inspire you and encourage you because you may be, who knows what you're facing right now. It may be on a smaller scale. It may be with a failed business venture. It may, and, and, and all in the name of faith, right? You're setting out to do great things. Um, I, uh, I, um, I, I was... I went to Sacramento and uh, I was going to meet with a guy and just make some decisions about what I would do and uh, really just facing like a, a, an impossible situation. And so I found myself saying, Lord, you know, I know you've been in this and I can't seem to find what you, what has actually been you and what is not, but I know you're in this and I know that you can deliver me. And what do you want me to do? because I, I don't know what to do. And the Lord said, let's just go sit on that bench over there. I'm like, that's the answer. Sit on the bench. <laughs> you know? 
He's like, yeah, it's all gonna work out. Just go sit on that bench. And so I'm like, okay. So I let my wife know, I'll be over here on the bench, you know? <laughs> just go drive or something. She just drives around the city and I go sit on a bench, a random bench in the city of Sacramento that probably has close to a million people. And that's my plan, to sit on a bench. And uh, I'm sitting there and this guy walks up and he's looking at a piece of real estate. And I had looked at that real estate before and uh, I thought, I'm gonna help this guy because he's, you could tell he's fixing to lease that space. And I'm like, man, I could, I could help him because I negotiated that lease and probably had 3,000 legal going through that and and I just felt he was highlighted to me and so I end up walking up and uh, we get to talking and I said what are, you, what are you planning on putting there and he tells me I'll come to find out he was trying to buy all those stores from my partner okay I like a like an ant in an ant pile I bump in and he says are you Trey Bollinger I said yes I am <laughs> He's like, your partner's crazy. I'm like, I know. <laughs> he said, I'm trying to buy all that real estate. I have 10 other stores. I had 30 retail stores. Like, I want to buy the company. I was like, I'm going to help you. <laughs> and so, uh, so the Lord used this guy. I was able to completely come out of that all because Jesus said, go sit on a bench. So... If you're facing an impossible situation right now, I want to activate your faith. Maybe all you need to do is sit on a bench. I didn't exert any energy. The Lord had a plan to clean that mess up. You might have made the mess for yourself. Joseph didn't throw himself into a pit. Someone threw him in it. Okay, so whether you got too close and slipped off, (laughs) whether you jumped in it, or whether someone threw you in it, God can clean up any mess that's in your life if you invite him into the mess. And so if you have a mess and you'd like to clean it up, I want you to stand up and come up here tonight. We just want to impart that to you. So is it time to go? Okay. All right. Uh, Just come up to the front if you don't mind. Okay. And look, and you shouldn't be embarrassed if you have a mess because everybody has messes. Everybody has messes. I have had tons of messes. But, uh, but God is good and God is faithful. And I, I want to actually lay hands on each one of them. Would you want to come help me? <clears throat> Just going to pray. <clears throat> Let's start down here. We'll come this way. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you, Lord. We lift up this cup, oh God. And we thank you that you're able to untie any knot thank you that you overcome any plan of destruction that the enemy uh, may cause, God. That you are the deliverer. You are the provider. You are the protector. You are Jehovah Jireh, God. And we release angels. We release the kingdom. We release your love, your presence, and your power into their lives, Lord. We thank you that you are faithful, You came from heaven into our mess and and you purchased and you paid for all of our problems. That's the only reason we're going to heaven. And you're not a God that would secure our eternity and not worry about our life. You're a God that comes into our world and changes it, Lord. And we release that into their lives right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to be personal. I just want to pray for each person because I know what it's like to be in these places. Joy, you want to pray for us? Lord, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you are a God who is not afraid of our mess, Lord. You're not afraid of uh, redeeming, Lord. It's what you do. Lord, you are the redeemer. You are the restorer. And Lord, I just ask that you would just cause her just to be able to get still and silent before you, Lord. And as she calls on you, I pray, Lord, that you would answer her, Lord. Lord, with keys and tools, Lord, just to overcome. Lord, just like Trey called on the Lord and he gave him uh, a simple thing to do, just to sit on the bench. Lord, even with that simple thing, Lord, that you can 
that you can use that, Lord, just to bring wisdom, to bring knowledge and revelation, Lord, just to help or to come in our time of need. Lord, and I thank you you're doing that for her. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> oh, Melinda, we thank you for this couple, Lord. I know you had something, Joy, you wanted to share. Yeah, the Lord just highlighted you guys to me today, and um, it's like he allowed me to be in parts of conversations that were happening where I overheard things, and I, I overheard uh, just like the starter went out in your truck, and then we're on the way home from lunch, and we had a flat tire and a blowout, and I just, it's like it got my attention, and I felt like the Lord wanted just to say to you, like, he is giving you a new starter. He is giving you a new start, mm. Mm. and mm. I feel like the blowout, it's like, a picture of God saying to you, he just wants to actually encourage you, not that he caused any of that, but he is about to blow on your new start. Yes. He is blowing on your new start. Mm. And I just felt like the Lord wants you to know that you have been faithful. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm. You have been faithful, and he calls you trustworthy. Yes. And I just feel like I, he wants you to know, like, not that there was a test, but you passed the test. Yeah. And that God wants to bless this yes. new venture, this new season. He's yes. giving you a new start, and he wants to blow on it. And I just see, like, Favor. I feel like, yeah, Favor. honestly, I feel like this, uh, just another level of leadership on you guys that's coming on you, mm. um, a new level of prosperity yes. is hitting your home, where mm. it might feel like, I feel like the Lord just really wanted to encourage you, because I think sometimes when we step into something new, even if we feel God on it, even if we feel peace, kind of like our venture to, to Reading. It's like you need a lot of encouragement in that season because it feels a little bit wobbly. And I felt like the Lord just wants you to know, like, he's in it and he's with you and he's going to blow on it. And your leadership and the prosperity in your home is going to another level. So, Lord, we just bless them with that today. We thank you, Lord, for new starts. We thank you, Lord, just for your wind. Lord, your wind that wants to blow on this family and this couple, Lord, that they have been faithful. Yeah. And they are trustworthy. Unless and I just, grain, yeah, that's it. Okay. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And there's, it's, it's been a death in a way uh, this season, but there's much fruit. And you're going to, you know, fast forward, you know, blank in 10 years, you're going to go by here. Just, I just see you guys just like, wow, yeah. had not God, had not we, I didn't understand, but just seeing the wisdom of God, and you're like a barnacle, you know, unless God gets in your world and kind of shifts it, you're just so faithful, you'll never do anything else, because wherever you're at, you're all there, and so sometimes with that nature, God has to come in and, and kind of put his hand down into our world, and it's painful, and it's not fun, because you're so loyal, uh, but ultimately, uh, trust God, do your best, pray that it's blessed, and let Jesus take care of the rest, so... Love you guys. I, I too, I just want to say this real quick. I feel like the Lord really wants to use you guys yes. in your influence in the business world. It's going to be like kingdom business influence, and you're going to be able to speak to others. And like I just remember when Trey and I were in the church world, and then we came out of the church world. Not that we came out of the church world, but we were in ministry, and then we started doing more business. And it was like the Lord gave us another anointing because we, we knew how to operate there, but now we were operating in a new level. And we, when you put those two things together, yes. it's powerful. And I just see that God's going to do something with the kingdom and business together. <clears throat> so. Absolutely. Yes. <clears throat> Father, we just lift up this couple and whatever it is, Lord, that they're facing, God. And we, just, uh, we just pray for activation, Lord, to untie things that need to be untied, to loose things that need to be loosed and release them into solutions, Lord, and to make the complicated simple, really to make the complicated simple. We thank you for simplicity. We guard their, their minds against just warfare, fiery darts, lies, and we release truth into their situations and truth into whatever they may be facing right now. And we elevate them in faith, Lord. We carry them with the wings of faith, Lord. We release faith into their world. We release truth belt of truth, God, uh, the shield of faith, Lord. We just uh, release those things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Father, we just lift this gentleman up and not sure what he's facing, but 
Lord, we, we know that you're able. We know that you're able. You know, and you can come right into a situation and circumstance. You are the deliverer, God. Uh, you know how to send the right people at the right time to the right place. And, uh, and we release that into his life. We thank you, Lord, that you undo whatever needs to be undone. In Jesus' mighty name. We just thank you, Lord. We lift him up, Lord. We thank you for your protection and your provision in his life, God. We thank you for your supernatural way to be able to come into circumstances and situations, God, seamlessly. Thank you, Lord, that uh, he's a man of honor, a man of favor. I just sense this, the, the shadow of the Lord is overshadowing you. It's like when Peter's shadow, when he came by and people were healed, I just sense that whatever it is you're facing, it's only to that, that the, the enemy may mean it for evil, that the Lord's going to turn anything that comes around you for good. You're just like God's real estate, you know. He's like, uh, he's just all over you and all over anything that belongs to you. And, uh, and if the enemy comes in like a whirlwind, God will raise up a standard. You're just protected. Every time the enemy attacks you, you just you know you're protected. Remind yourself, he's got me. From A to Z. That from the, from the largest of things to the smallest of things. That uh, you're protected. Thank you for that. Yeah, I just, tonight I looked over at you for a second and I just, I had like this weird, like, uh, vision of you as a child running around. And I just feel like the Lord is saying, like, I'm bringing you back to your childlike faith. I feel like he's going to bring you back to some memories and just some places, even as a child. And I don't know exactly what he's going to do through that. But I just feel like he wants you to know that's me. Like, when I do that, that's me. And he's, he's going to cause you to just come into another level of faith that's just so childlike. And it's going to feel maybe even a little bit funny at times. You're just like, this just feels funny. <laughs> but I just feel like he wants you to know that it's him. And he's blessing it. And he's just going to use it to bring you to another level. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you see us or that you know us that you don't hide your face from us, that you are present in every time of need, Lord, in every time of trouble, Lord, that you are present. And Lord, there's nothing that you cannot do, Lord. There's nothing that you cannot do. So Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, that whatever, that place that she finds herself, Lord, right now, Lord, that you would just come First, just to love on her, Lord, that you would, she would feel your love and your affection for her, Lord, more than she's ever felt before. And I just pray that you would just begin to speak to her and give her wisdom, Lord, for her future. Sometimes the Lord, in moments where we feel like, I need you to fix this problem or I need you to fix right, what's right in front of me, he'll actually start speaking to us about the future. And I feel like he wants to do that with you. I feel like he wants you to lift up your head. And I feel like he wants you to look to the stars. And I feel like he wants you to begin to dream about your future and ask him for things that are in your heart. Ask him for those desires that might feel really far off and really impossible because he wants to do them. Mm. And it, it, the soil is ripe for those prayers and those seeds right now. Like Nate was saying earlier, it's ripe. So, Lord, I just thank you for her. I thank you, Lord, that in this season where sometimes the practical thing, Lord, is that you would just fix the, the problem in front of us, but sometimes, Lord, you want us to dream bigger than that. I heard the Lord 
course today that he turns a mess into a message and misery into ministry. And uh, we thank you for her, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Holy is somebody is the name. Lord, I thank you that you are good. I thank you that you are good. Lord, I thank you that you have her. Lord, that you have her, that she is not alone, but you are, you're not even, he's not even just walking next to you, but I just feel like he's carrying you and that his grace is on you and his grace is going to carry you through this next season, whatever it is you're facing, that he wants to carry you, that his grace is sufficient. So, Lord, I just, I pray, Lord, that she will just be able to fall back in your arms, Lord, and let your grace hold her and cover her and walk with her through this season. And I thank you for what you're doing in her life, Lord. We thank you for for the answers to prayer that are coming. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I just feel like the Lord wants just to remind you that it's not about what you've done or haven't done or didn't do or what you can do. He just wants to remind us like over and over and over again, it's not because we're qualified that he blesses us. It's not because we did all the right things. It's just because he's good and because he can do that. And so, Lord, I just, I thank you, Lord, that she doesn't have to come with something to get something. She just has to come. She just has to ask and that you will meet her right where she's at. And so, Lord, I thank you that you are meeting her, that you are faithful to come through. You are faithful to answer her prayers. We just thank you that you're doing that. Lord, bring breakthrough in places that she needs breakthrough tonight. In Jesus' name. All right. Is there a Katie anywhere in the room? Any Katies anywhere? Katie? Back here? Okay. Come on up, Katie, if you don't mind. Hey, Hope. Come here. Hi, Katie. She got a word for Katie, so. Yeah, come on up. So the Lord showed me a picture of a lamp. Um, But you know, like, the covering over it? Like a shade? Yeah. Yeah. Um, It wasn't there. Like, the covering wasn't over the lamp. And I just think that means that the Lord wants you to have no filter and shine bright. Um, And to just be yourself. And if you already do shine bright, um, just keep doing that because the Lord loves that fun, unique part of you. And you don't need to be afraid to show that part of you. So, yeah, I just pray that you can keep that part of you and get wisdom for the Lord for that part of you. In Jesus' name. (laughs) Awesome. Here, you want a copy of it? You want a copy of it? There you go. All right. Cool, cool. All right, we're, we're going to wrap up here pretty soon. Um, so uh, we talked about replacing lies with truth, and that's a big part of just hearing from the Lord and really how we train even our, uh, our kids and our family and kind of how we access what God's saying or not saying. So there's the inbound word of the Lord that is not an intruder but an activator that comes into our world. Faith comes, right? So sometimes the voice of the Lord comes because he just comes and wrecks your world, give you vision, barges in. I think I was talking with Jake. He's like, how do you know what to do? I'm like, I live on green till he says red. I don't look for green. Some people sit around and be like, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Paul said the spirit forbid me. So like, I didn't do it. Meaning that you got to get out there and get forbidden. And if you're not getting some forbidding, then you're probably just waiting for your boat to sail in. And uh, it just won't. Just go ahead and tell you that. Just... You got you to gotta get active, you know. And so when, when the Lord isn't activating that, that might be because you need to be activating some things in your own world 
and then allow the Lord to kind of give you boundaries with those things. But <clears throat> concerning, uh, um, I, I, I came into a place where I really I didn't seek counsel that often, but Jason Ballison's a dear friend of mine, and he actually is like the pastor to all the pastors at Bethel, which is like a couple hundred counselor, uh, counselor to all the pastors. And so I'm like, <clears throat> this guy can help me, right? So, and he's a dear friend of mine. And uh, so I'm like, hey, man, I'm just going through this. And I just really need somebody to talk to, you know. Uh, I think I called you that same day. I called you and I called Jason. Because I just really wanted just someone to hear me and dialogue with me just a little bit so I could make sure and land, like, whether I'm healthy and, and my stance on, on whatever I was going through is healthy. And uh, that's what you do with friends. And, uh, and so she actually um, said, he said, give me a second. He calls back. He says, uh, I got you an appointment with Don De Silva. And she, and she created Sozo Ministry at, at Bethel, which is like world-renowned ministry. She wrote books about it. And it, it, it comes from the basis of taking and identifying lies and replacing them with truth. It's, it's simple, but yet kind of complex. And so he said, I got you a meeting with her. Can you show up in an hour? He's like, you really ought to take it because she don't do meetings anymore. And it's a personal favor for me. I was like, okay, I'll be there. So I go in there and she's like the most renowned counselor at the mega church and all over the world. People fly her in all over the world just for counseling and whatnot. And so I'm expecting like, again, to be like taught something, to be told something. And we go through an hour of listening again. And, uh, and so I would come into an area of my life and she'd be like, so, um, so what do you, what do you think? God's saying about that. And I'm like, I don't know. She's like, okay, well, let's ask him again. <laughs> and so I'm trying to get answers. She's bringing me more into listening. I want to find out that my listener, uh, I wasn't paying close enough attention, but as I was accessing heaven, suddenly it all made sense. And I began to know what I needed to do, but I needed someone to bring my emotions down and just cause me to have a little space to access God. And so I started incorporating that in just how we raise our children. Um, when they're, you know, doing the pterodactyl and going wild, you know, you can come and try to clip the end of that fruit, but how many of you know, just come right back. That unless you really understand what's going on with a child and with, with your wife, with your husband, um, that you're really not changing anything to bring a compliance move. You know, like, let me, let me, let me fix this environment right now because it makes me feel better. That doesn't do anything. But if you can find out what's going on and bring that high, that, that highlight or that light of the Holy Spirit into a situation, you might actually fix the problem. You might actually bring a change and take and expose a lie and come into some truth. And it's been transformational. I'm gonna let Joy tell you a story about our, our son and, and something that happened. And I think it's a practical thing that you can bring into your home and family. Yeah, so kind of just... With what he was saying, basically, this counselor was just um, saying, here, asking him a question, and then having him get quiet and still and close his eyes and ask the Holy Spirit what the answer was for that question. And um, so, basically, the same thing. I went to a like a parenting small group class, and um, and that's what she was doing. I'm like, wow, this is what everybody does at Bethel. <laughs> Parenting, marriage, <laughs> counseling. We just all learn how to hear from the Lord. But it's powerful because when we can come into that place where we can access him on our own for every question, then we're not having to depend. You know, obviously we want to depend on people to an extent, but I feel like the Lord, he actually gives us dreams. He gives us scenarios why mystery sometimes in, in our life. And I just believe it's because he wants, he's drawing us to him. He gave you that dream. It might be a mystery to you. Um, and side note, I encourage you, if you have dreams, actually write them down because a lot of times it is God speaking to you. And you might be able to go to somebody else and, and have them interpret your dream. But I feel like the Lord wants you to go inquire of him and go, what are you saying something in this? What are you saying? And it's another place that he's like, Come on, come get close. Come on, I'm drawing you in. Can't you see I'm drawing you in? I want to speak to you. I am speaking. And, um, okay, so so she basically just taught us some tools to do with our kids, and she, te she talks a lot about just not just correcting behavior. 
um, but figuring out sometimes what the bigger root is. And um, she gives examples and things like that. Like your child comes home from school and they're just have this nasty, awful attitude or whatever it is. A lot of times it's not because um, they just have a bad attitude and they need a spanking or they need correction or whatever it is. A lot of times it's because maybe something happened that day that really hurt or was painful. And sometimes just addressing the problem, giving a spanking, just causes m- more pain or worse things to happen. Children typically respond kind of like we do. If you've ever found yourself in a really bad mood, like take a moment, sit down and go, okay, what is really bothering me right now? And listen, because a lot of times the Lord will give you keys and show you roots. Well, this happened earlier today and it pushed that button and that's where you're acting like this because it stirred up that feeling or whatever it is. So anyway, um, I, I don't remember what the issue was with Joshua, but something was going on and she taught us that with like little kids something you can do is just say let's ask Jesus to shine his little flashlight on your heart um, because you might not know what's going on but he does ask him to fla- to shine that flashlight on your heart so you can you know he can speak to you and show you what's going on in your heart if you don't know and he was like I don't know how to do that I don't hear from God and all that stuff at first I'm like yes you do let's you know so we had to walk him through it wasn't like this easy process at first because they have to learn but we just kept doing that. I said, let's shine the light. Close your eyes. Let's shine the light. And he got quiet, and he said, it's because I'm mad at myself. And I was like, you're mad at yourself. Why are you mad at yourself, babe? And you would have never thought that was a problem because he was actually being very ugly <laughs> to other people. And, um, and I was like, why are you mad at yourself? Well, because I, cause I always mess up. And because I'm stupid or whatever. And, of course, he was believing a lie. And it was causing him to, to act out and do the very thing that he didn't want to do. Because he was believing this lie about himself. And so, anyway, we just walked him through. Um, we just said, buddy, that's, that's a lie. And we actually had the whole family come in the living room this time. And his sisters just began to speak truth over him. No, this is not true about you, Joshua. This is the truth. And we just all began to speak truth over him. Before you know it, he's crying, and he's having this moment where he's like, his eyes are open, and he's like, wow. You know, so anyway, that's an example of just the and Lord being able to speak even to a child to figure out what's going on in their heart and be able to hear from heaven and go, man, I was believing a lie. How, how powerful is that, that he... He went into that search engine. He sent up a, I need to understand, I need to know. And he got an instant download. And mom and dad could have never got him to get that. Like, you could have told him that a thousand times, and he never would have fully received it. But how many young men are out there that didn't have these interactive moments with the Lord? I mean, I didn't growing up. No, none of this existed when I was growing up. I didn't. Nobody ever told me to access God and ask him anything. And I grew up in a in a pretty strong Christian home, but it was like, nobody's talking about talking to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And so all my kids hear from the Lord. All my kids can access information. And it's crazy when you bring them into that place and you're like, okay, what's heaven saying? I had an instance with Joshua, same thing. He's like, Grace hates me, you know? And he's just doing the pterodactyl and making everybody miserable. And, uh, and, and I'm like, so I had to pull him to the side and be like, okay, so Grace hates you, right? Yeah, yeah, she hates me. So I can try to, I can try to correct him, but I don't know if that's going to do anything because he's still going to walk around and be like, yeah, Grace hates me. So, so I'm able to go into his, his world, his mind, and, and it's like, okay, well, let's take a second because I know you're upset. And what is the Lord saying about that? Let's just take a break. Time out. Let's have time out. What's the Lord saying about that? She don't hate me. Okay, so that's a lie then. Yeah, it's a lie. So what's the Actually, truth? I think I might be like her favorite. <laughs> and I said, so what's the truth? He's like, she thinks I'm cool. I was like, what else? Before long, man, he's like got this whole thing. And you know what? Not one time have my kids ever been like said something that was out of line with what the father said. I like, I'm waiting on it. I'm like, somebody's gonna be, and he's smart. Like he can manipulate. He can be like, God said she does hate me. You know what I say? Like you're, you're waiting for him to kind of angle it, but it's like there's a place in the Lord 
there's a fear of the Lord that man, they so hear from heaven, they know exactly what God is saying. In the moment, we do, we do it with hope, we do it with grace, um, and, and it's tr- so transformational to bring God into what's going on in your child. We do it in our marriage, and, and I'm all out of sorts. It's a very non-confrontational way to better come into a situation and be a support system to what heaven is saying rather than a solution. If any husbands are in the house, you know your solution is not going to fix anything. You're better off saying, well, let's just ask the Lord what he's saying, right? And then let them ask the Lord what he's saying. (laughs) And so so that's just, again, a practical tool that takes a kid that makes this God that seems so far off become very personal, and they actually get in tune and trained. What if you'd been doing that for the last 20 years? What if you just started when you were five? Accessing the Lord, communicating with him, and constantly pulling down lies, identifying them, putting in their place and replacing them with truth. You're like, I'm talking about the kids. I need to go home and do that right now. Matter of fact, I need to be doing that about five times a day. Yeah, probably so. Until those lies are gone. You may have to pull out lies for the next month. <laughs> Weed that garden. You know what I'm saying? And, and that, you want to hear someone's cell phone number? You want to hear somebody's street name? You want to hear somebody's you know, get a real word of knowledge or word of wisdom about someone, you can't bypass like your own interaction about your own life. It starts there. And as we do that, we increase capacity. We increase capacity. Get in the word. You're a word church. That's gonna cause you to be a hearing church because you can't have a capacity. My girls are really great hearers and they can hear clearly. But I, I actually, you know, their, her mother. Is a, is, a, is a word woman, and she, and she, she actually kind of like confronted my kids. She's like, y'all are very good at hearing the Holy Spirit, but if you don't combine that with a real desire and a taste and an appetite from the word of God, it's gonna restrict your ability to hear in the future. So it's the balance of the written word and the rhema word, the written word and the rhema word. So two things we gotta do, we gotta get our kids in line, because a lot of people are just like, Bible, 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 Bible story, Bible story, Bible story. If that's not what they're lighting on, get them over here on the rhema word, the rhema word, the spoken word, the spoken word, the spoken word. And now like, I'm like pushing my kids into the written word, because they don't have a problem hearing from God. Not at all. So uh, you got something God showed you? And then I'm gonna wrap it up with with one deal and we'll end it. Are you having fun tonight? Is this practical stuff? It's okay? So. While she's answering, I'm just going to give this one scripture um, that you can write down. And it just goes along with everything we're, we're talking about tonight. But it's Jeremiah 33, 3. And it says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. Um, so, yeah, it's just calling to him. And he's like, and I'm going to answer you and tell you, tell you things that have been maybe hidden that you haven't seen. He wants us to. He's like, here's the key. Just call me. Call me, and I'm going to tell you. So. Is there a John anywhere? Any Johns in the house? John? Middle name John? Okay. Hmm? Do I? John? John is all of their middle names? Okay. It's like a word for the whole Slegal family of boys. They're all? They're all John? I never knew that. <laughs> That's a fun fact <laughs> about you. Uh, okay, well, why don't you uh, share that to the Slegal family? Or if anybody knows John. Yeah, you can really. I think it's, I like the Slegal family. I think it's good. So, but get them all lined up right here. Come on, Slegals. Come up here. So. Slegal. Slegal. Yeah. Sorry. Slegal. Slegal. <laughs> Okay, I think it's a good word. I read it. I think it. I think it's right. So, all right. So, um, the meaning of John is God of gracious, which I looked up. God but, gracious. Um, God of gracious, right? Oh, God is gracious. God is gracious. I knew that. Okay. So, um, I think what that means is that you make God so proud, and even if you don't do anything, and and He's believing in you so much, and even if you don't think it, if you if you don't think it, um. And you don't have to prove anything to him, and you don't have to prove anything to anyone, and that you are so loved by your family and by him, and you, <laughs> um, and you don't need popularity, you don't need new no, uh, new clothes, and you don't need all this special stuff, stuff to like needs. prove anything to anyone, yeah. and 
you are fine who you are and you need to know that you can be yourself in front of anyone and or anywhere or anything and um, you might try to impress people and think I need to impress this person because blah 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 you know and you might try to impress your family or things like that but you don't need to do anything to impress anyone just because be. just be who you are and um, and when you're being more of yourself, you're more impressing other people. Mm -hmm. If you're being yourself, actually, you're impressing people. That's Just good. so that you're being brave to be yourself in front of people, that's, that's impressing people. Yeah, that's being good. someone else is not impressive. Yeah, that's so. good. I love you, baby. So powerful. Thank you. That's a good word. That's a good word. <clears throat> Your kids want to play gospel. Let them play. Right? You have to create moments where your kids can be activated. And you got to teach them to taste, take risk. They have to take risk. Well, I have to take risk. We have to take risk. I took a risk and turned a whole sermon this morning. I could have bombed. I kind of bombed a little while, and then I finally found my feet. But I don't care about bombing. I care about not taking risk. I would rather bomb taking risks than living uh, with regret in my life. And with my kids, I'm putting them out there. 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 You have to take risk in life. You're going to miss God. You're going to have words that you're like, maybe that wasn't God. <laughs> Those things are going to happen. But you have to practice the presence of the Lord to tune in to his voice. And, uh, and, and, and that's something that, you know, we, we, uh, we acquire as we get more sensitive. We, authority uh, allows us to operate in the kingdom realm, but sensitivity is learned. There are things that are imputed, and there are things that are imparted. We are who we are, but we're learning and growing through process, and those are things that are imparted to us. Last thing that, that the Lord highlighted, and we're, we're ending, and once I make this, this time of ministry, everyone's free to go unless it applies to you, and then you can stay and get ministry. You can go ahead because I think we're at the ending time. But we, um, you know, it really hits home with everybody's finances, right? Finances create flexibility. They create freedom. They create the ability to give. They, they really, uh, we trade time for money uh, in this world we live in. And so when we have setbacks financially, it goes way deep into our heart. And it really can perturb the most deepest places of emotion. And um, because we need it, right? Like we need air, you know? And, if, and your dreams, uh, finances are a part of that, uh, your time, all those types of things. And so when uh, I tell you about the business deal, when we, um, I got stroked for probably 150,000 um, bucks in that thing on, that I didn't see coming. And, you know, my, my carry on interest was like more than most people's home. You know, I was probably carrying three or $4,000 a month and just minimum payments. <laughs> and like when you're facing that, uh, and I never, uh, I never went bankruptcy route. I went deliverer route. I went Jehovah Jireh route. I went like God can do anything or route. Sue route. Or Sue route. I, yeah, I probably had grounds to, to litigate, do all those types of things. And I've just, I've just felt like I'm, I don't defend myself. God defends me. And if God needs, if someone goes with them one, says go with them one mile, go with them two. Uh, and if you want my shirt, take it. God will give me another one. It doesn't matter to me. Um, and that's kind of been the posture of my heart. And, and one thing I, I didn't say about a lot of, when I said untangling messes, is the Lord had to take me into a 3 a.m. hour, wake me up, spend five hours, getting the bitterness out of my soul. Because it's like poison. And I had to release all of the bitterness and the anger and, and being upset because sometimes if you're, if you're, you know, if someone does something malicious to you, you've got to, you got to run a comb through your spirit. You got to get that out because you can't receive until you, until you get that out. But when you get that bitterness out, you can have Jesus time on the bench and meet people and that can solve half a million dollar, two million dollar almost problem that you had. That'll, that'll help. But then I still, even though I kind of undone that, I still was facing you know, like I said, a servicing three to four thousand dollars a month. That's like, that's like drowning and someone hands you a brick, you know, and, and overcoming that's like brushing your teeth with Oreos. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going nowhere fast. And so I, and that, that, that actually pivoted me into launching another business to, to say, hey, what I have here is successful. I can't be mad at it. I make really good money, but it's not enough money. So I'm going to then have to pivot and go into other things, and little did I know that pain would open doors for me that would later end up being huge blessings because it caused me to focus 
and push into something else. So I push into something else. And I remember coming into this, this month last year, I mean, I was seeing some, some substantial, like, uh, just, just prosperity and coming into, like, extra 20000 this month, extra 10000 that month, $30,000 showing up. I'm talking, like, in a matter of, like, instantly coming in $60,000. And I'm just, like, out of nowhere, out of, out of, you know, out of thin air and, um, and coming into faith thinking, like, oh, wow. This is it. And, and, and calculating and working and building a business so I can come out of this hole. And then only to see that it all gets absorbed by some, like, miraculous problem that we had. And I called Nate again because I usually call him. I don't, I don't need self-talks, like, that often. But once or twice a year, I'm like, what the heck? And I told him, I said, Nate, I think I could make 150000 bucks next month. And I would have $150,000 worth of problems. It really doesn't matter how much money I make. I think I could make a million bucks next month and I would have a million dollars worth of problems. I, I just can't seem to overcome whatever this is in front of me. And, um, and my wife has a word. Uh, she, the wind blows and brings, he- she, she taps into heaven's search engine and heaven speaks. And when heaven speaks, you take it to the bank. And she said this. She challenged me. She said, Trey, uh, I know that you want to, to be a good husband and be responsible. And I know you want to work hard. And you, you feel the responsibility of this debt. And I know you want, to, you want to pay it. And you do an outstanding job of generating more revenue. Uh, but I just want to have, I, I feel like the Lord gave me a word that he paid for that. And just like he paid for sin. And just like you have faith that he you're going to, debt. he paid for debt. Just like you have faith that you're going to heaven and you don't, you're not doubting that, you're going to have to apply that same faith to this debt. So here's what I'm challenging you to do. You cannot pay another payment beyond the minimum payment on any of that. And like, that was a challenge for me because I'm like, I've got to come into money. I've got to drive this down. I've got to deal with these high rates and I've got to see my way out of this. She said, I'm telling you, you have to commit to the minimum payment only and that that no matter how much money you come into and no matter how good business may be, that the Lord is going to clean that up and pay for that. And you are not, and he is. You have, and it has to be miracle money because, because he's going to do it. Right. Um, Colossians 2.14 says this, Having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of legal demands which were in force against us and which were hostile to us, and this certificate he has aside and completely removed by nailing it to the cross. And I just had this word. I'm like, I, I might be crazy, but I feel like he said he wants to pay for the debt. He, he wasn't just talking about salvation. He wasn't just talking about sin. He was talking about debt and financial debt. And um, I'm like, I, I could be wrong, <laughs> but he wants to pay for it. She's like, you can't pay for it. He's going to pay for it. I'm like, right. <laughs> I'm like, you're not working right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so she, just, she just has this just spot on word. And I, I, I wrestle with it because I'm like, I'm not ready to receive that. And finally, I had to just say, I surrender. You know how you got saved? You finally just surrender. And I'm like, you're coming into my problem and you're fixing it. Okay. Regardless of how I got there. And I did that with debt. That was about December. So that, was the, that was the end of December. Well, middle of December, I'm like, actually it was before that, maybe. Anyway, I believe there was a few, like $5,000 checks that came in. And then I was like, I just know God's going to do something around Christmas time. I don't know why, but I'm like expectant. And I literally would go to the mailbox and open it think, every I'm day. Sorry. With expectation. And we're not he was like, what are you? People don't send us money for anything. There's no reason okay. we should be expecting anything. But I was expecting. Literally, I'm like, is there anything in here? Yeah, she called me like, you've been in the mailbox? I'm like, Man, I don't even Every day, I'm like, is there anything in the mailbox? And he's like, I don't know why you're so expecting of something that's going to come. I'm like, because he said he's going to pay for the debt. And I just feel like a December, he's going to do it, like a big part of it. And... I open the mailbox one day. It looks like there's nothing in there, and there's, but I, I look a little closer, and there's this tiny little short envelope, and I open it up. 
No car, no nothing, just a check. And I open it up, and it says thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. Now I was like, like lay hands what? And partake. If anybody saw me in the street that night um, or day, whatever, they would have seen me dancing. dancing. In the street. Yep. And and I think that from December to March, without making an extra dollar in my normal world, we paid seventy thousand dollars worth of debt off. Seventy. I had when I started that season, I had a five thirty credit score from usage. Not from bad. I never missed a bill. I have a five. I had a five thirty. It wasn't credit score. our debt, actually. It was yeah, we were just absorbing problems. The company um, <clears throat> left us with a hundred thousand dollar credit card. Yeah, that was yeah. nice. Yeah. So um, I, I just, uh, I just, I just secured financing my business at a preferred rate with a, close to eight hundred credit score. I just got preferred financing on my last vehicle. 2% rate. Everything I'm doing, they're like, Mr. Bollinger, we would love to give you some money. I went from nobody would give me a dollar for anything. And you know, I, I, my, my dad is super wealthy and the Lord would not allow me to go get money from him because he wanted to be my papa. Gotten one dime from him. Got one dime from him. The Lord wanted to show me that he was my dad and that he would help me. But I'm telling you, we scaled all. I really scaled like a hundred grand, in a in a very, 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 very short period. Guys, it takes ten years to do that. It could take twenty years to do that, and he did it just like that, and created excessive positive cash flow. And yeah, we got a lot of great things going in our life, and I've hit a new normal, and um, it's pretty wild. But but. But I've, I shared the valleys with you guys. We're, we're, in a, we're moving into a great peak right now, but it, it's not fair to not let you behind the veil. And, and that, that whole process of us dialoguing with Holy Spirit and leaning in and hearing well-timed words and leaning into my marriage and tightening up our ability to hear and bringing that into the culture of how we do family and how we do life, I wouldn't trade that time for anything in the world. It's been super special to me. And so concerning debt, I, I want to, uh, we want to, we want to apply that as a trigger for your faith. Um, most people at some point need something paid off. So I want to, I want to release that, that, that tonight in this place that Jesus paid for debt and my wife got the word. So I just kind of obeyed it. So I'll let my wife lead off in that. And so if you, if you want to respond to that and you say, Hey, I want to I want to see debt uh, broken off of my life. I want to be underwriting mission, ministry initiatives. I want to be, you know, doing things and supporting our building fund and and uh, and and doing underwriting my wife's dreams and whatever it is that, that you have that, that God has in front of you and take money to do it. And so I think that we need to deal with debt and uh, and release God's favor and ability to just absorb all that real quick. What if He just absorbed all the debt in this room? Just, ah, let's just knock that out real quick. And you as a people united and, and uh, was able to, I mean, he saved your soul. Why can't he save debt? My bro, Kenneth Copeland told my brother one time, he said, Jesus paid for debt. Why are you worried about it? It's easier to get, I mean, if you can get sin dealt with, surely you can get money dealt with. And so I think that I want to activate that spirit of faith tonight. Again, you know, the first scripture I read was that the work is to believe. Like that was a pretty our, far out there thing for us to believe and attach our faith to and really go, all right, God, like, we believe you and we're going to do this. And guess what? He showed up. And so I just want to encourage you, like, I'm going to pray over you guys, but just ask the Lord, like, Lord, what is it you want us to do and how do you want to show up? And he's going to show you. It might not be the same scenario for us because he wants to do it differently for That's you. Right. And this is how God shows his glory in our lives. Like, this is our testimony to the people outside that are lost or in the world right. or whatever they're doing. You, can, you have this testimony and go, you know what? This is what God did for me. This is what draws people to him because he's better than we think, because he's really good, because he can do the impossible in our lives. And he wants his glory on your life. And he wants you to have those testimonies. And it might not be, you know, for some of you, it might not be debt. It might be a healing. I did feel like tonight that the Lord wants to heal some people in the room. I feel like there's a healing anointing. I don't know if somebody has any back problems, but I felt like um, specifically your, the right side of your lower back 
Um, but I believe the Lord wants to heal you tonight. And if there's anything else, but that was just one thing um, I felt like the Lord wanted to do. Um, before I pray, I just, a word I felt like he gave me for this house is just that revival looks like healthy families. That's good. Revival looks like healthy families. Revival looks like healthy marriages. And and I, I believe God wants to bring the signs and the wonders and the miracles and all that to this place. I believe he, do, he does. Just like Trey was talking about this morning, he wants to blow his wind through this place and he wants to touch us. But sometimes revival actually looks like healthy families. It looks like healthy marriages. It looks like healthy children. And I just, I felt the Lord just wanted to admonish you guys tonight as a church because that's what he sees in this room. And there's so many healthy families, healthy marriages. And he's, um, I actually shared this with the women's group, but I feel like you have worked really hard on the foundation. You've worked really hard to create a solid ground, to put the bricks in the right place. And, and I, just, I just feel him just smiling down at you. And I feel like he is ready to do the next level with you guys. Like he's ready because you've gotten the foundation right, because you've laid such a solid thing. He's like, all right, like this church is unstoppable because we have the right things in place and um, the right things in families and marriages. Like he's just ready. He's ready to bless you guys. I feel like even the word I gave you guys about favor, like brace yourself for the favor. That's what he wants to do with all of you. Brace yourself for the favor because it's coming to your home. It's coming to your home. So, um, so all Megan, right, let's if do you... Let's, let's pray the prayer over the debt and, and release our faith uh, and just activate that trigger point, and then let's, let's let Nate close and do whatever he wants to do. So, okay. Um, if you want to stand, you can, and I'm just going to release. If, to, if you want the if you want to apply... Uh, your faith towards God absorbing debt in your life and uh, for a financial miracle to where it doesn't have to do with you grinding it out, but it has to do with God coming in and absorbing uh, debt, just like he did sin, then stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just thank you that you're reminding us over and over and over again, Lord, that it's not about what we can do. Yes. But it's all about what you've already accomplished, what you've already done. Our work is to just believe, Lord, that you're that good. Lord, that you are so good that you even want to cancel debt, financial debt. Lord, you came to the cross. Lord, you died on the cross, Lord, for our sins, for every debt. And Lord, I just thank you that tonight... Lord, we just release our testimony of you paying for our debt, not something that we could have done, not something that we worked for, earned, strived for, that you just did it. Yes. And so we just release that testimony of every person standing here, Lord, that you would cancel the debt in their lives, Lord. Lord, that it would be a testimony of your goodness, of your glory on their lives, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, that you're going to do it. You're going to give some different tools, Lord. Lord, some maybe you'll bring them, a, you know, a job or whatever it is, Lord, that you have a way to get them out of where they are, Lord, that you desire to cancel the debt in their lives. So we just thank you that you're, you're doing that now. We thank you, Lord, that it's paid for, that it's done. In Jesus' name. Nate, if you want to... Check, check, check. All right. Thank you. Um, well, it's, uh, it's about 830, and we're just going to dismiss. And uh, I know we're going to be up here just a little longer if you want prayer for anything. But otherwise, I'll just say um, just what they shared tonight. X 2 talks about this. Uh, Joel t talks about this. In the last days, what did he say? I will, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughter. I'm telling you, these are things we need to be not just um, – aware of but just very much expecting and I really feel like even just what was talked about this morning really just in the last few months um, the Lord just getting us ready in, in just the very practical ways to access uh, you know God right we just ask him how many of you know ask 
Amen. Amen. Let me just pray for you. Father, thank you so much just for tonight, just for this weekend, just for the impartation. Father, thank you that you've done things, you've imparted things uh, that we could, uh, we've been looking for for years, that we couldn't, thank you for that, for those seeds planted tonight, even ones we don't know that were planted. Lord, thank you for it tonight. Everything that you've done. Lord, thank you for breakthrough. And we just plead the blood of Jesus over every word that was spoken, over every promise that was given. And we just say, Satan, you can't have it. And we thank you that you're watching over your words to perform it. And we give you honor tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you Wednesday night.